and welcome to our chemistry class today. My name is Sam Awoyemi. I will be your chemistry teacher today in our chemistry class. Um, the topic we're looking at briefly today is allergens. Everybody see allergens? Allergens. Now, the learning objective on the topic today, number one, you will be able to recognize allergens on the periodic table. You will be able to draw the electronic structure of allergens. Number three, you will be able to recognize allergen molecules and you'll be able to form allergen molecules. Number four, you'll be able to recognize some pattern in terms of behavior of allergen generally on the periodic table and in our day-to-day -day life. Without wasting time, let's look at the first learning objective, halogens and the periodic table. These are the halogens on the periodic table. These are the halogens are elements that are found in group seven of the periodic table. If you look at the periodic table, this is an expanded periodic table. By the way, do you know the definition of periodic table? Okay, definition of uh, the periodic table is defined as a table which contains systematic arrangement of elements in accordance to their proton number. I take it again. Periodic table is defined as a table which contains systematic arrangement of elements according to their proton number. Or you may want to say according to their atomic number. Okay. As I said before, this is an expanded, an expanded periodic table. So, the periodic table you see, you look at the one occupied in uh, the one that is at the middle, hydrogen. Then by your left you see Li, which is lithium. Then Be, beryllium. If you go, there is a gap, this little gap with a groove. This groove is a group, it's a peculiar group of the periodic table called the transition metals. Now, if you remove the transition metal completely from scandium to zinc, go down, remove it completely, and you coalesce the table together, you will see L, L I, B, E, then you quickly jump to B, which is boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, then hydrogen, helium, and uh, neon, and so on and so forth. Now, the first group in the periodic table start from the left, Li, that is lithium. The second group is Be, beryllium. Then the third group, why, why we omit the transition metals, the third group is boron. Then the fourth is carbon, the fifth, nitrogen, the sixth, oxygen, the seventh, fluorine. Now, the center of our discourse today is that fluorine. Fluorine, this group that is coated blue, that is a group seven, counting from left to the right, omitting the transition matter. Counting from left to the right, 
you you meet the group seven you get to group seven which is coated blue so these are called halogens the group seven elements then how can you identify them the first one is f c l b r i a t what are their names the first member of the group seven element is fluorine followed by chlorine followed by bromine followed by iodine then last but not the least astatine so the this group of elements is next to the noble gases if you go to the last group towards the right the last group on the right is the noble gas they are the noble gases so they contain eight electrons in the outer shell so the element in group seven contain seven ele electrons on the outer shell so that means they are one electron short of the electron possessed by each element in group in, in group uh, eight now without wasting time let's look at electronic structure of the group seven element all the group seven elements have seven electrons in their outer shell all the group seven elements have seven electrons in their outer shell as you have learned earlier element uh, electrons are arranged in shells element uh, electrons of the of each element on the product table are arranged in shells this shell arrangement is called uh, their electronic structure that is a layman definition of electronic structure the strength uh, the uh, shell arrangement of electron is called the electronic structure now looking at the fluorine fluorine has seven uh, eight uh, nine electron two and seven nine electron the the first two are resident in the first shell while the remaining seven are resident in the, uh, the outer shell of fluorine now you have named that electron the out the electron the second share has maximum of eight electron can take maximum of eight electron how an electron does it remain for uh, fluorine to, to complete that eight electron if count it one two three four five six seven so it's just one electron short of complete shell diagram now let's go to the next one chlorine chlorine has 17 electrons 17 electrons two are resident in the first in the inner shell the second shell has capacity of retaining eight electrons while the, the third share has capacity of retaining eight electrons but for the case of chlorine it has seven electron in the out at the outer shell okay so and so on and so forth that's the case of bromine iodine astatine they have something in common and that thing they have in common is that they have seven electrons in at their outer shell and in fact, that is why they are grouped in group seven on the periodic table. Now let's go to halogen molecules. Halogen molecules. All the group seven elements are molecules containing two atoms. All the group seven elements are molecules containing two atoms. Before you can say this is chlorine gas it must have been a molecular form for any element to be in molecular form it then for as well as the group seven to be in molecular form it must contain two atoms of that same element for example two atoms of chlorine 
makes one chlorine molecule. Two atoms of fluorine makes one fluorine molecule. Two atoms of iodine makes one iodine molecule, and so on and so forth. Each atom is one electron short of a noble gas electron, uh, electron structure. I said that I said out before by sharing electron in a covalent bond, full outer electron shell are achieved. For n elements in group seven to become a molecule, it must contain two atoms. Now, how are these two atoms formed? We look at the case of fluorine. We look at the case of fluorine. Fluorine has seven electrons at the outer shell, then two electrons in the inner shell. If you take two fluorine, you combine them together, they share electron, they share their outer electron, they share the one outer electron, then they become what? A molecule. As you can see in the diagram here, this fluorine at the left and the fluorine at the right, they have been able to successfully share their outer electron to become to become what? To become a molecule. Now, this is a molecule of fluorine. Fluorine. This is a molecule of fluorine. It contains two atoms two atoms of, of fluorine, two atoms of fluorine. Now we go to patterns, patterns. Now what we learn learning under patterns of, of this element, number one, we learn about their color, learn about their physical states, then we learn about their reactivity. So we start with the, with the first pattern, the first notable pattern of this element on the periodic table of halogens is their color. Now, the group same element gets darker as you go down the group. As at the at the part at the upper part of the group, the group one, the group seven element, the element there are light in color. Then as you go down, the color becomes dark, darker, and they become darker as you go down the group. Now look at this diagram now. Fluorine, the notable color of, of fluorine is yellow. Fluorine is yellow in color. Chlorine is green in color. Bromine is brown in color. Why iodine is purple in color. Bromine solution, not if you look at this diagram, there is a flask here containing bromine solution. And not the brown vapor, vapor above the liquid. So look at the brown vapor of fluorine above the liquid. It is brown in color. Now, a question comes. What is the last member of the halogen family. Were you paying attention? What is the last member of the fluorine of, of the iodine and uh, halogen family? Okay, let's go back to the, to the last to the first to the first uh, slide on the, the, the periodic table. What is it? A T. And what is that called? Astatin. Good. Astatin. Astatin. So, who can predict the color of astatin? If the color darker get darker as you go down the group, I will know that the color of fluorine is yellow, and the color of iodine is purple. What will be the color of astatin? Oh, good. Black. The color of astatin is black. Very good. 
So you can see the color dark, get darker as you go down the group. Now let's look at the physical state. The physical state of elements in allo under allergen family. Number one, the melting point. Number two, the boiling point. Now, before we consider the melting and the boiling point, let's look at the atomic size. Atomic size. Now, if you look at this table here, you look, you see elements. The elements are listed. Then look at the size. Now, these are the molecular size of each of the of the elements. Fluorine is now in a molecular form. This is fluorine gas. Then chlorine gas. Bromine gas, the uh, sorry, bromine liquid, then iodine crystal, iodine crystal. We'll get to know more about that as we go on. Now, chlorine, the uh, fluorine is of a small molecular size. As you go down the group, the molecular size increases. What did I say? As you go down the group, the molecular size increases. Now, as the molecular size increases, the boiling point and the melting point also increases. So as you go down the group, there are three things that increase. That increase. Number one, at molecular size. Number two, melting point. Number three, boiling point. Now look at the, the melting point of fluorine. It's minus two, 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 zero minus 220 then melting point of fluorine is minus 101 the, then the melting point of bromine is minus 7 then increases it increases immediately to plus 114 which is the melting point of iodine the boiling point of fluorine is minus 188 My boiling point of chlorine is minus minus 35 then Boiling point of bromine is plus 59, and that of iodine is plus 184. So as you go down the group, the atomics at the molecular size increases, the melting point increases, and the boiling point increases. Another peculiar and uh, notable uh, property of, of allergens is that they is a unique group that contain all the state of matter. That is, all the state of matter are represented in allergen family. We have the state of matter solid, we have the state of matter liquid, we have the state of matter gas. Okay, so look at the first one, fluorine. Fluorine is a gas, is a gas. Then chlorine is a gas. Then followed by bromine, which is a liquid, then followed by iodine, which is a solid. It's a very, very interesting and peculiar family on the periodic table, the allergens. So let's look at their pattern of reactivity before we call it a day in our class today. Reactivity increases of the group. What did I say? Reactivity increases of the group, that is, as you go up the group, reactivity increases. Then, as you go down the group, reactivity decreases. Okay, so, as you can see in the diagram here, reactivity increases. We learn more about that in our next lesson. Today, we have been able to learn about the allergens and the periodic table. And learning the structure of allergen Allergen molecule, the pattern of allergens in the periodic table, their color, physical state, and their reactivity. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.